Hello, everyone, and welcome to Book Break, your place to discover reading recommendations from the Greece Public Library. I'm Claire, a librarian here. I lead two book discussions and purchase nonfiction. Today, we have a very special guest that you're probably going to recognize, my former co-worker and co-host of this very podcast, Kirstra. <laughs> I am so very excited to be back with Book Break. I can't even tell you how excited I am to be here. Well, just give us a few like updates of where you are now and what, yeah. you're, what you're doing. Absolutely. So um, I, my family has moved to Maryland. So I am currently living in Charm City of Baltimore, Maryland. Where um, Claire was born. Where Claire was born. <laughs> uh, it all comes full circle. I know. Um, and I am working for Montgomery County Public Library as a branch manager in one of their branch libraries. Awesome. So. Well, we missed you here, and I am super excited to have you back to talk books. So. Yes, and I am so excited, can I say it, to be back for Stack of Shame. <laughs> <laughs> the Stack of Shame. So mm -hmm. what is a Stack of Shame? For me, it is my towering to-be-read list. And the stack never seems to get any smaller, that's for sure. How about you, Kirstra? Oh, it's like one out, two on. Yeah, always. <laughs> always. So I frequently tell myself, okay, Claire, you're not going to add any more. But, um, and even with pruning mine, I'm up to, I believe it's 180 on my Goodreads Want to Read shelf, which is how I believe we both keep track of our to be reads. It's true. And I'm actually pulling mine up right now. Uh, 263. Well, I think oh. I, I did some pruning, so <laughs> <laughs> I got mine down a little bit. Um, yeah. But why do you think that we both have such big to-be-read lists? Well, I mean, I think the obvious answer is that we both love to read and we're always looking for new books. And there is just not enough time in the day to do the amount of reading we would we would need to do to read all of the books that we want to read. I know. I know. And I think part of mine is, you know, not just being in the library, but I also, I listen to other podcasts, too, about reading, mm -hmm. which adds yeah. to mine. And I'll just let you know that two I really like are Book Talk, Etc. and Currently Reading Podcast. Um, I buy too many books, Kirstra. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you that moving was like the, the best worst thing ever for my book collection, because when the moving truck is coming, tough choices must be made. So I actually got rid of a lot of my books yeah. in the move. Yeah. Um, I kept, you know, signed ones or sentimental ones. Right. But a lot and I work in a library as do you, like I I could get books every day right if you <laughs> if want, want to. to so um yeah I I I had to be like Elsa and let it go with a lot of my book collection yeah I think being in a book group and also like having friends that read that constantly you know push some recommendations to that also helps to grow my to be read list so absolutely but um so I have um, an idea. Maybe mm -hmm. we can pledge to read the books that we talk about today by the end of the year and get them off our list. I know you are a lot better at this than I am. So I am going to, I'm going to, to fall on my sword and say that <laughs> I will finish these books by the end of the year. All right. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. And Let's we can, do it. We can report back. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of regretting now that one of the categories we talked about, um, I I did a twofer. Uh oh. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I'm gonna start us off because we talked mm -hmm. about what we would include and one of the um, categories that we have is what book is the longest book on our to be read list. Mm -hmm. And for me, after the pruning <laughs> <laughs> that could be a dystopian novel after the pruning. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, but it's called A Walk in the Woods, Rediscovering America on the Appalachian Trail by Bill Bryson. And I added this book, Kirstra, in October of 2014. 
and it's just been <laughs> hanging out there on the Goodreads list for nine years. <laughs> so it's so good, though. I know. And, um, and as you know, I'm fascinated with Appalachia. I love mm-hmm. the mountains, went to school in the mountains. Um, and one thing, although I don't envision myself, I am not going to be like Grandma Gatewood and walk the entire Appalachian <laughs> Trail unless I lose my mind, in which case someone come and get me, please. Um, it's an undertaking. Yes, but I would like to hike some smaller chunks of it. And um, yeah. one of the ones I really, really want to do is called McAfee Knob. And that one is fairly close to where I went to school, like in between Blacksburg, Virginia, and Roanoke, Virginia. Um, So maybe this book will inspire me um, because one day I want to picture myself standing on the ledge of that gorgeous, you know, overlook. But Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so if anyone out there has done McAfee Nub, let me know, motivate me, push me to read this book. Excellent. You will enjoy it. And I think that Bill Bryson narrates most of his own audiobooks. So that might be an option too, because he is, he's so funny. Yeah. And I, I believe it might even be on Hoopla if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to look, look up that. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, So what's your uh, oldest one? So the book that has been on my Goodreads to be read list the longest is The Folded Earth by Anuradha Roy. Um, This is uh, literary fiction um, set in India at the foothills of the Himalayas, uh, published in 2011. It has been on my list since I think probably like 2012. Um, and I have no recollection of why I added it to the list. I mean, it sounds lovely and interesting and absolutely like a book I would read, but I have no recollection of like learning about it. Um, and apparently I haven't been that motivated to read it because it's just been sitting <laughs> for a decade. I know. <laughs> Oh, well, it's good that we, like, share our shameful moments with people, you know? Absolutely. Uh, well, the next one I, I have had on my list for a while, and I'm pretty sure that you read this one with Pints and Prose when you were here, mm-hmm. was Maybe I Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. Mm-hmm. And um, I bought a copy of this book, so it stares shamefully and mournfully from my bookcase <laughs> as I sit, you know, and watch TV. Um, but this mm-hmm. one is about a therapist that I believe goes into therapy herself. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. And face it, we could all use therapy, right? So I think this is a memoir. I love memoirs. It pulls the curtain back on the benefits of the therapy stigmas or hesitancy to open up about mental health, which I think in this day and age is, you know, pretty relevant topic. Um, But I've heard it's also can be funny, um, Mm -hmm. pretty direct. So what were your thoughts on this one? Um, I really liked it. It is on the longer side, but it reads really quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, The author who, as you said, is a therapist, um, is also, she writes the Ask a Therapist column for, I want to say, maybe it's The Atlantic or The New Yorker. Okay. Um, So she is pretty widely known. um, And it's, so I agree with you that basically everyone, like everyone could benefit from some therapy at some point in their lives. Mm -hmm. Um, But the, the thing that I found so interesting about this book and um, kind of almost reassuring in a way is that you have this therapist who is, who seems to be very good at her job, like very perceptive and um, emotionally intelligent. And she falls into some of the same traps and pitfalls as everybody else. Like she initially seeks therapy because she has a relationship that falls apart and she like can't get unstuck from it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that seems very relevant and relatable 
to everyone. Right. So it it really does, like you said, it it kind of destigmatizes the process and you know, it helps you to see like that it is a process that everyone could benefit from at certain points. Yeah. And hopefully it made her more empathetic to her own patients. I would yeah. think. Yeah. So <clears throat> so yeah. candid, supposedly funny at times, relevant. So that's mm-hmm. that's why it's number two on my list. Excellent. So the next one that I will talk about is one that you talked about on book break. Oh, yay. Um, Yeah. And I was like, well, that sounds excellent. And I'm going to put it on my list and I'm going to read it. And everyone that I know who has read this book raves about it. I'm like, yes, yes, I need to read this book. I have still not read this book. It is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle. Okay. So, um, you know, two friends who create a video game together, but my understanding is it's really more of kind of a relationship book about how these two friends and their relationship evolves over time. Mm -hmm. Does that seem accurate? Yes. And it's, it's not a romantic relationship, which Mm -hmm. a lot of times between, you know, opposite sex, that's what it ends up being is almost like a romance trope. But that's not what this is. Um, This is a friendship that actually goes through challenges, periods of time where they don't speak, you know, but yet also some of the most fulfilling creative moments of their lives when they come together to make these games. But a lot of other human aspects are involved in this story. So... Yeah, I actually have a physical copy that I can give to you to get you started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, just got to read it. Yep. <laughs> so I think you'll like it when you do read it. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So my next one is is another recommendation by one of my college roommates that I, I see frequently, um, is a very avid reader, and she also reads and then listens to books. So this is one that she recommended to me. I actually got my book club to buy in, and then COVID. And we we ended up, you know, I think we met virtually for a couple months, and this was one of the books that we could not get, um, like on Hoopla, or that I would Mm -hmm. have enough, um, like, e-copies or audiobooks. But it's called Washington Black by Essie Edugan. Ed John. Um, so here's the setup of this one. George Washington Black, or Wash, is an 11 year old field slate on a Barbados sugar plantation, and he's terrified to be chosen by his master's brother as his manservant. Um, to his surprise, the eccentric Christopher Wilde turns out to be a naturalist and an explorer an inventor, and an abolitionist. So soon he's initiated into a world where a flying machine can carry a man across the sky, where even someone that was born in change can, chains can embrace a life of dignity and meaning. So, but then I think something bad happens, like maybe a death or something, and then they're on the run, and somehow he ends up in the Arctic, which that's another thing I'm always fascinated in is the mm-hmm. Arctic. Um, and the interesting thing is I believe this book is set to debut on Hulu sometime this year. And I really like reading a book before I watch a series because then I'm like, I did not do that with the one that you and I both like, um, the spy one. Um, oh, slow, slow horses. Yes, yes. And so I'm reading this book, those books, you know, picturing the people that I see on TV. And then mm-hmm. if something happens to one of them, I'm extremely upset, you know, so. <laughs> so I, I want to read this book before it, it mm-hmm. showcases on Hulu. And I think there's a lot of like really top name actors that are going to be in it. So I'm really hoping for a good adaptation. So that is Washington Black. So. Nice. That does sound super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it would have made a great book discussion choice. So maybe I'll throw it yeah. back on the list again yeah, for next throw year. Yeah, back in the list. Yeah. If they never actually got to read it. Yeah, true. Oh. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so my next one is going to be my nonfiction selection from Stack of Shame, and that is Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford. So this is a memoir. Um, the author um, grows up, as she's growing up, her father is in prison. Um, he serves, I think, 30 years, all told. Um, and she kind of has him on a pedestal as like the person who most understands her and who is most like her um, and probably, yeah, and is just, you know, waiting and waiting for the day that they can actually be reunited outside of prison. Um, he is released as she, after 30 years imprisoned. Um, and after he is released, apparently she finds out what he was imprisoned for, which she never knew. Um, and that kind of changes the whole relationship and makes her reevaluate um, everything that she knew. And I don't know what the secret is. Um, I have very carefully tried not to spoil myself on that. Well, it um, sounds but, pretty intriguing. It just does. That premise it, alone. Yeah. And this is a book that came out um, about two years ago, I think, and made a bunch of like best of the year mm -hmm. nonfiction lists. Um, and I thought it sounded super interesting. And I still think it sounds super interesting. And I just haven't picked it up yet. Okay, I might have to add that one to my growing list as well. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sure. so my next one, we had talked about adding a classic, and um, yes. I just went to see the play To Kill a Mockingbird with mm -hmm. Richard Thomas, who, for all you Walton fans, is John Boy, grown up now as Atticus um, mm -hmm. at the Rochester Auditorium Theater, and it oh. made me realize that I remember next to nothing about this book. I think this is a book that we... A lot of us had to read in high school, you know, required reading. But um, the only thing I remembered was Boo Radley, you know. <laughs> I, I, I sure didn't remember Scout running around dressed up as a ham at the end of the play. But, you know, I digress. So, but the thing is, is I think just with the events that are happening today, like I even forgot what happened at the trial. Like I had it convinced mm -hmm. in my mind that things were going to end differently. And it, <laughs> when it didn't go well, I was just like, oh no, I, I this is not what I remembered. I thought Atticus was the big hero, you know? So yeah. I think it's time for me to add this back to my list and kind of read it as an adult and hopefully get a different viewpoint and take on it. Um, I found it interesting that A, this was a Pulitzer Prize winner. This book was published in 1960, but a lot of these themes are still relevant today, which I don't know what that says about us as a society, but, you know, um, there we have it. It's also number 15 on the American Library Association list of most banned books, which um, that kind of blows my mind, too. And just in today's world with censorship and everything, I think, you know, it's kind of important to read books that maybe other people don't like. So, um, absolutely. Yeah, so as we still grapple with racial injustice, inequity, division, um, just division in community, family relationships, I just, I just kind of want to revisit it. And it's interesting because Harper Lee considered her book to be a simple love story. And today it's regarded as a masterpiece of American literature. So there we have it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's funny because I read To Kill a Mockingbird for the first time as an adult. Um, pro probably only about four or five years ago. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so I I would be very interested to talk with you again after you read it. Okay. Uh, I actually listened to that one. It is narrated by... Sissy Spacek. Sissy Spacek. Yeah. Um, and she's excellent. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really excellent audiobook. So, yeah. yeah. I think she would do the accents justice mm -hmm. if i'm not mistaken okay absolutely yeah um so it's funny that that's the book that you chose because for classics um i this is my twofer um and i picked two books that somehow i never wound up reading in middle school or high school 
Um, and I feel like everyone else in the world has read both of them, and I, I just never have. Um, and that is The Outsiders by Essie Hinton oh. and Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Oh, wow. Never read either one. That's a great pairing, though. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like I should probably read them at some point to know what I missed yeah. in middle school. <laughs> Well, I remember reading The Outsiders when it first came out, not because it was required reading. It's just because we all thought it was so cool. That's how, you know, right. older than dirt I am. So, <laughs> yeah, I've never seen the movie of either one either. No, I think Matt Dillon, though, was it wasn't Matt Dillon in that movie? Oh, they were all in it. Yeah. 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 I would I would watch that. Yeah. Yeah. Holds up. It does. does it? It, it? Isn't it a story of fitting in, belonging? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like, uh, yeah. 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 Good choice. Perennial yeah. middle school scene. All right. Yeah. Lord of the Flies right. is a little darker. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I got to tell you, I'm not super excited about the fact that now I have committed to reading it. <laughs> but, I could get you a papal dispensation, you know, for. <laughs> Because you pick two instead of one, you know, we'll, we'll forgive you. Forgiveness <laughs> is a theme, you know. I'm sure I can, you know, put on my big girl reading glasses and get through it. Right. Or if not, <laughs> find a good audio book, you know. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> and accelerate the speed. So. Right. All right. So my next one, um, for some reason, I... I kind of a time travel nerd and there are certain books I like and certain books I don't but I've had this one on my radio or radar for a while it's called Una Out of Order by Margarita Montemore um, okay. so this the setup is it's New Year's Eve 1982 and Una Lockhart has her whole life ahead of her so at the stroke of midnight she's going to turn 19 and your head promises to be great. Should she go to London to study economics? Should she remain home in Brooklyn and pursue her music career um, and be with her boyfriend? So as the countdown begins, she awakens and she's 32 years into the future in her 51-year-old body. <laughs> So she's greeted by a stranger in her house and told it's her own. So, and then each year she kind of leaps around. So that's where the Una oh, out of order title comes from. Hmm. So I just thought that sounded really interesting. So you get a lot yeah. of pop culture fads, um, stock tips, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it's like, what is she going to be next? But, um, hmm. Supposedly, it's magical, heart-wrenching, and an unforgettable story about the burdens of time, endurance of love, and the power of family. So, and <laughs> this one I also think is going to be developed into a series, which is making me yes. hurry up and escalate it up the food chain, yeah. so to speak. So, Una Out of Order by Margarita Montemore. Okay. That sounds really good. Yeah. See, I'm going to have to put that one on my list. I know. This is how it goes. <laughs> um, all right. And this is the last one, right? I believe so. Unless yeah. we have okay. uh, honorable mentions, which, of course, I have many. <laughs> okay. Well, I did a two for earlier, so you get some honorable mentions. Okay. Um, so my last book is um, another book that Claire has already read. And discussed. Um, it is Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. Oh, and that's, so, that's a chunk. <laughs> I know it is. And that's that's maybe part of the reason I haven't picked it up yet. But Pulitzer Prize winner, really excellent reviews. I think it is currently the most requested title in my library system. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, it's available immediately on Hoopla. I was going to say, in both formats, it's it's available. And this and is I haven't done anything with it yet. <laughs> well, the one thing I will say is I listened to this one, and the narrator mm -hmm. was fantastic. I, yeah. I really felt like people probably in the 30s felt like when they were listening to a radio show, like you were so mm -hmm. engaged with him, and he really just embodied the character for me. Um, yeah. It was fantastic. I think I would like to read it as a book at a later hmm. date, but um, I thought 
if you listen to it, I think you will be sucked right in. Yeah. So yeah. there are some really oh. tough parts to that book, though. Yeah. But. No, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I've actually never read any Barbara Kingsolver, um, which I'm not sure how I've managed that. Yeah. So far, but I'm like, no, I really like this is the book. I need to read this book. And I just haven't. Yeah. Well, the, um, my I'll do one honorable mention, and I believe yeah. this is one that you read. It's Circe by Madeline Miller. Yes, I loved that book. Well, loved the it. thing is, is I just read a book about Greek mythology that mm -hmm. I promised I will talk about on a later episode. It was Clytemestra, I believe it was. Clytemestra? Yes, and it was compared over and over again to this book. And, <laughs> and I was just like, well, that book has been sitting on my to-be-read list, you know, for a long time. So that <laughs> has made me think that I really need to move it up. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I loved that book, and it was excellent on audio. Okay. So I'll plug that as well. The narrator was really fantastic. Okay. So... Yeah. Ah, so many good books. I know, I know. We've gotten covered some good ones today. So it's been so great to have you back again and talking oh. about books and our stacks of shame. Um, yes. And maybe we can meet up again later in the year and talk about our progress. I would love that. And, and um, maybe I, what else you've been reading. I know our fantasy and sci-fi readers are probably going, where <laughs> is that old host? <laughs> Well, but you did a whole episode on cozy fantasy, and that I, was wonderful. Yeah. I added a bunch of books to my list from that episode. Yeah, Jenna has kind of pushed me into that area, so, mm -hmm. and I do like sure. it. But. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me back. Oh, this we're so so fun. Yeah, it's been great having you back. Thanks. Uh, thank you everyone for listening to book break and follow us on wherever you get your podcast and if you think of it leave us a review it helps other people find us and tell your friends until next time we'll see ya we've only got one episode per month in the summer book break is a production of the grease public library made possible through the support of the friends of the grease public library theme music composed and performed by sean greif is that fine? Yeah. <laughs>